All right, you're listening to WMBG 97.7. Moving on, it is time for Super Sound Showcase. I'll be guest hosting today. I'm Andrew Ballantyne, my guest. Sponsored. Sponsored. Super Sound Showcase is sponsored by Culture Fix. Thank you to Steve and Jen and Shirley for their work in the community and for making this happen. We are on WMBG 97.7. All right, I'm very happy to be hosting today and today only. My name is Andrew Ballantyne. You've probably heard me before. Today, my guest, Mr. Robert Hodge. You've probably heard me before, too, because I usually host this program. That's absolutely true. <laughs> We're doing something very different. I'm actually getting ready to leave the area for a little while, but I'll be working back and forth between Virginia and Colorado. True. And I wanted to give Andrew a chance to come on and thank everybody for all the support that, that they've given him here in Virginia. And I also wanted to have a moment where we could celebrate the fact that we've done an enormous amount of work together. So I thought just for fun today, let's switch the, the tables. Let's turn the tables. And I'm on the other side of the desk. He's sitting in the host chair. And uh, we are going to talk about some things that are coming up. We're going to talk about some things that have already happened. And uh, we've got some good music to do for you today. So Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. So to get things started, um, it's cool. I get to be in the question seat. I get to ask the questions instead of uh, I've been practicing, them. too. No yeah. comment. Uh, no comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your All first right. question, Wild Man? First question. So... I think everyone's pretty familiar with you, Rob. You're on here talking a lot. Um, oh, which is, I finally which found is, somebody to pay me to run my right, mouth. Right, it's, it's one of the your greatest best thing ever. It's one of your best skills. Oh. Um, so you started playing music very young, four, four mm -hmm. years I, old. When did you I, yeah. When did you start talking? Well, you know, I know I was at least talking. As an entertainer. <laughs> well, I know I was at least talking by four, too, because actually here's something I've only told one time on the air when I first started almost a year and a half ago with my show. I actually came on here and I told uh, everybody that my very first interview on any media whatsoever was on WMBG when I was four. Right. And there, there is a tape, a real tape that is hilarious because I had been selected to be the first depositor uh, at the new Williamsburg National Bank, which is no longer in business. Right, right. But it was really funny. I, Miss Virginia and I cut the ribbon together, Miss I, Virginia. I seem to remember this story and I remember mm -hmm. that you, uh, you had a favorite word at the time. Well, exactly. And the, the guy on the radio, asked me, they interviewed me about being the bank depositor, and they said, what's your favorite word? And I said, money. And it's still my favorite word. Isn't <laughs> so that not weird? A lot, not a lot has changed. It is very weird. And they <laughs> say how you are at four is how you are at 40. So yeah, I think nice. that's true. Nice. Um, so now you, let's see, you've been at WMBG. You've been in the radio business now almost a year and a half. Almost a year and a half. Almost a year and a half. Yeah. And this was, you'd never done this before, except maybe, you know, I know, I know you've I, been very interested in meeting a lot of the celebrities and people that you looked up to. Um, well, yeah, and that's been a lot of fun. I found out now with my own radio show, everybody is merely a, uh, a phone call or an email away, and that's really fun because, right. you know, we've been getting a lot of attention in Williamsburg. We're getting all these famous people. But I will tell you, too, the only real experience in radio that I had prior uh, to landing this show, I had pitched a few ideas to other networks and stuff over the years, but the one that I did for a long time, for a year of college, I actually had a syndicated gossip spot that was hilarious because five yeah. times a day, my little blind items went all over the state of California, and it was things like, guess which male film superstar showed up at La Doma on Sunset Boulevard with a beautiful woman that was not his wife, and they were mostly <laughs> like silly blind things that you'd have to guess who it was, and I would record those they happened like every day and I would record three days a week and try to just have all the gossip ready it was hilarious how long were you, you so you've lived uh, a pretty pretty awesome life as an entertainer you've gotten to live um, in some of the biggest cities I'm the luckiest for, man ever. for music and for entertainment so, well, so New York mm -hmm. Los I, Angeles I, yeah Las Vegas Atlantic and, and City this, cruise this would, ships yeah this would have been happened when you were in Los Angeles mm -hmm. so yeah. that would have been about the same time that you met up with Liberace yeah, actually. Can you that, tell us that, a little bit about how that went? Well, that was a very interesting experience because, you know, Liberace owned a club called Tivoli Garden in yeah. Las Vegas. And I had a friend at Interlock in a big music camp in Michigan. And I went uh, and I was good friends with a lot of people when I left. But Jamie went back to Las Vegas where he was originally from and he kept in touch with me. 
And when Liberace came to the Greek theater in Los Angeles, he called me, he goes, do you want to come see the show and meet Lee? And I'm like, yes, I want to meet Liberace. So he set up tickets and took me back to the dressing room. And then if you've ever had a friend like do something totally off the cuff that surprised you and you had no idea, that almost seemed like it wasn't the great thing he was really meaning to do for you. It scared me to death because he said to Liberace, he goes, this is my friend Robert, you gotta hear him play. <laughs> I've never been so panicked in my life. I'm like, oh, he doesn't need to hear nothing. No, no. And he and Liberace was like, oh, I'd like to hear it. He goes, and the, the theater is empty now. Let's go out there and you can play for me. And I, I was like walking to the death chair. I was like, oh, God, I've never been so nervous in my life. And I sat down at his grand piano and I had been studying the Chopin D flat major prelude. And I started playing that and he was like, you know, just making me feel like it was going well. So I played the song and didn't have a nervous breakdown. And he goes, well, you know, you really should come and play in my club. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'd love to, except that I'm in school in Los Angeles. And he goes, but what can they teach you that I can't better teach you in Las Vegas? And I was like, well, that's a good question, but I still can't just drop out of school. Right, right. And he looked at me like, all right, well, whatever. So. It turned out he didn't let go of the idea, and it's rather a long story. I probably should just cut to the punchline. He worked it out with my school because he kept asking the dean that same question. What can you teach him that I can't better teach him in Las Vegas? And the next thing I knew, I was being shipped off to Vegas one week out of every month with getting credit like I was still in school. I, I remember a little bit about this story. Um, yeah. can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the first time playing at Tivoli Gardens oh, and what you were expected to do? I wanted to, uh, well, oh, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> it's really kind of funny because I had never played Las Vegas and certainly never played this club before. And of course, his theme song was, a, a beautiful song from World War II called I'll Be Seeing You. And it's it's just the most beautiful song and every show got ended with this song. But I didn't know it. I didn't know it all the way through to hum it. I didn't know how to play it, anything. And people kept asking for it because they were in his club. But thank God he had designed the club himself and all the walls around the club were all floor to ceiling mirrors. And the sheet music and the lyrics were etched in in the mirror all the way around the room. So when I got my first break, I was like, dear God, I hope my memory is good today. And I went around trying to memorize that song on my break. And I came back and I was like. And I played that song for the first time and I can play the heck out of it now. He'd be jealous, but it all started with learning it from the walls of his club. That's a crazy way to learn a song. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> So um, when I met you, yes, I remember you saying that you were one of the luckiest men in the world because you had met everyone that you had ever up admired. To, had ever admired. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward a year and a half, you've been in radio. You've been meeting a whole different group of people, all kinds yeah, of. Yeah, and you've gotten into rock and roll and and reconnecting and, with some people that I met long some, ago. So, it was really funny. So yeah. just for a second, tell me mm -hmm. about some of the most. Ex interesting experiences over the last year some of the most interesting people well, just to summarize you know what i i'm i'm fascinated by the idea that i learn something every day on the radio right. and a lot of times it is from a guest and and someone who's so accomplished and so well known brings a wealth of knowledge to the table obviously the interview with scott hamilton i've quoted numerous times because I just couldn't believe the way he inspired me and motivated me. And just little things he would say right. and, from, and, and from and for those who don't know who Scott Hamilton is. An Olympic ice skater, gold medalist, and a, a, a lecturer, and a three-time cancer survivor. I mean, he yeah. has done things in his life that it are just like unreal. Quite a life. Yeah. He has, and he's the most humble, sweet man in the world. And he said to me, he goes, I'm trying to make everybody understand that the path you're on is the path to victory from the very moment that you decide that it is. And when he told nice. me that, I mean, I was like, good heavens. I mean, it just made me, re it opened your eyes to so much. Charlie Daniels was another one. I didn't expect that, that an 82 or eight, I think he's 82 year old country star would be the wealth of advice that he was. He sat yeah. there and he told me, he says, you know, I tell everybody, go do the show for whatever they'll give you. And don't look at the empty seats. Excuse me. <coughs> don't look at the empty seats. Just be glad for the ones that are filled. And you know yourself as a performer that 
we're up there and there may be a full house with four empty seats and we're like why aren't those four people here did they buy the ticket and not get to come did they have a flat tire are they dead what happened <laughs> you know and you let it influence you and interfere right. with your work and he's like it does not matter he goes the only thing you need to worry is not even are you doing a good show he goes you just need to be concerned with before the halfway mark in the show do those people already want you back and I mean, the way he talked to me, I mean, just things like that, those encounters have helped right. me take a new command over myself on stage. They've helped right. me realize my power as a performer even more than I already knew. So it's been yeah, great. That's, that's wonderful. Good question. That's, yeah, that's wonderful. You got wow. it. You know, you would be great to have a show when you get to Colorado. You should find something because I've always thought you had a perfect face for radio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it helps. It helps. Um, and I'm able to, uh, you know... <laughs> avoid the the weight that the mic puts on um, <laughs> you're stealing my joke now, thief. <laughs> um i give you a fan that's, that's great that's great um so you in the last year and a half also you've been trying all kinds of different things um i'm really interested in what you had going on in montreal Oh my gosh, you know what? I have become a rock star for the science community. It yes. is the coolest thing that has ever happened to me. I have a dear friend, his name is Dr. Linwood Pendleton, and he is the, th this is the craziest thing I'm ever gonna tell you about somebody's title. He is the lead ocean scientist for the World Wildlife Foundation, and he lives in France, and he does all these amazing things. He is a fellow of this and a, a member of that, and it's just astounding, but he gave a keynote speech at a science conference in Montreal, Canada, that there were like 800 of the most important ocean biodiversity uh, colleagues were there, and they came to listen to a message that Linwood had uh, devised. Not to interrupt you, but did they allow plastic straws at the uh, the event? I don't remember being served a straw at all. Actually, no, they, that was something I, they'd already. Or thought otherwise, no. I, I don't think we we had a straw. Scientists, that was something. Yeah, that they no, didn't we had do. no straws. <laughs> but the funny the funny part of it was he had a message that scientists need to change the way they communicate with each other in order to yeah. also effectively engage the world and get right. the problems right. taken care of. So this brilliant man set about to make a three-act play of sorts, and he had a poet, and he had me, and some brilliant knowledge and some great slides, and we were on a stage in front of these people at the Palais du Congrès, which sounds marvelously intimidating as it is, but yeah. it was just a fascinating venue. And we got in there, and honestly, they, they, the, the people that organized that, that event told me they had never seen a standing ovation at a science conference the, keynote address. Can you describe how the actual, the music play, how, how the yeah. music and the, the science part, the presentation, well, how that kind of You know, the, the trend now out. is really starting to understand that involving the arts in science presentations makes it more compelling, more right. memorable, makes people pay more attention. And honestly, Linwood and I, sat down with his initial uh, outlines and we tried to figure out how I could use music to highlight the points that he was making. You know, and we covered everything from Carol King to Scott Joplin to um, the, uh, uh, the, the theme from 2001, the also Sprach Zakarutha, and we had, I mean, just every kind of music you could think of, and we, we went all the way across the board. And then in a couple of spots, Anna, this wonderful lady, uh, who is also a gifted scientist, she mm -hmm. writes poetry, and she had the most brilliant, fast-paced, you know, energetic poetry that would be spot on with the message that he was given, and then suddenly I'd be playing something that would, uh, would, uh, and, and for instance, he he talked about the the work that Sir Richard Attenborough uh, had done uh, f for narrating British uh, documentaries about the oceans and about the sea life and stuff. And uh, there was a great thing; a picture flashed up as he was talking about his work, and there he was talking to the Queen. And I went into a little bit of James Taylor's "Whenever I See." Your smiling face, and you know, and it was just, and and the, the humor that was there, and the message that right. was underlying, it makes people, it memorable. The people just wigged and enjoyable. out. And, and enjoyable. that night, we ended up invited to the secretary, the Canadian secretary to the UN, invited us to a special dinner and made it in our honor. It was the did you great, go? You went, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I go? <laughs> I'm the social climber of all time. I was in my tuxedo before anybody knew I had one in the suitcase. It was great. And That's, we've now actually been asked to to do 
this project again in an expanded form in another city that, that they're trying to choose, but it may be Los Angeles, and we're working with some heavy hitters on getting it actually made into a film that will begin to take the message to the public. That's exciting. That I'm is, excited. I'm that thrilled. Is, that, is, that is really awesome. So, so what goes into that? I know... Um, you do a lot of these gigs where you're traveling around. A lot of um, corporate things. Um, right. L'Oreal just took me down to Amelia Island in Florida, and I'd right. never been there. It was beautiful. And I got to play in the fantastic ballroom of the Ritz-Carlton, and they stashed me upstairs in a room that cost more than I could ever imagine paying on Priceline. Right. right. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, this is it. I have arrived. I felt like Elton John was checking in. Awesome. It was cool. That's amazing. So, um <laughs> <laughs> We've obviously been playing for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're about to go to a commercial break here in a second, but when okay. we come back, um, you and I are going to perform a couple tunes? I would like that. I would That'd like that wonderful. very much. All right, so you are listening to WMBG 97.7. This is Super Sound Showcase, sponsored by Culture Fix. Thank you, Steve, Jen, and Shirley. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial break with some music from Robert Hodge and myself, your guest host, Andrew Valentine. And welcome back to the new Super Sound Showcase. Today, guest hosted by artist Andrew Ballantyne. Yes, and today, guest artist is our normal host, Robert Hodge. Here I am. And uh, so this has been fun. Andrew, you did a good job with that interview. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it's perfect. Uh, you're doing really well. And uh, to everybody who's listening, I hope you're having fun because we are having fun. And I just want to say that as Andrew expands his market and starts to work in other parts of the country, even though he'll be here just not as frequently and not on a regular basis, uh, we'll still hopefully have some things to do. And I know that we have our friendship to back it up because in the last two years that I've known him, I tell you what, we have taught each other a lot about music and we've shared a lot of great musical experiences that have brought us closer and, and has, have given us a lot of things to remember. So, you know, it's special that as he's already ready to go next week, it's special that we have an opportunity to celebrate some of the music that we've done. And we were in the studio recording the beginnings of an album last year, uh, last week actually, uh, that I, I really had a great time. And it was the first time that we've recorded with Andrew's voice, which is formidable, just with piano backing. How, did you enjoy that? Absolutely. So we're going to give you a little taste of some of that because I just I have a keyboard and the the album was done actually with a beautiful antique Baldwin grand piano. And uh, Stephen, we are as grateful as we can be for that that opportunity to record in your studio. And uh, we hope we'll be able to finish the project there eventually. Um, what would you like to start with? Let's do "Fly Me to the Moon" and "Mac the Knife." Together? Together? In one. All right. We can do that. <laughs> Scarlet billows 
start to spread Fancy gloves, oh, we're so magic, baby So there's never, never a trace of red On the sun, sunny Sinatra was going to show up, you big tease. Yep, right? Oh my goodness, that was fun. What else? What should we do? Would you like? How many would you like? Oh, I, well, I know. Let's do them all and we'll stay all night. <laughs> How about, um, what a wonderful world? Oh, I like that one, yeah. Yeah, you remind me of Louis Armstrong. Do <laughs> Oh, all right. You haven't lived until you've worked with this man for a few months. Than, than I 
I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of the people passing by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying I love I hear babies cry I see them grow They'll learn much more than what Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world I think to myself What a wonderful Yeah. I like it. Just imagine fun. The thunderous yeah. applause. Okay. <laughs> so we should have something a little snappy to take it out. What you thinking? Well, I am leaving um, soon. So let's do Jambalaya. Oh, my word. <laughs> um, standard or creative arrangement? Creative. I'll try to follow. Oh, my word in heaven. All right. We uh, sometimes as musicians, we hear things. Uh, that you might not have thought that they'd go together, but in our creative brains, sometimes they do. So here's what we have. <laughs> Little circus music. Goodbye, Joe, me gotta go, me on oh my own. Me gotta go. Down by the bow, my elbow, the sweetest one, me on oh my own. Son of a gun, go have big fun on the bow. A jumble line, go fish by, feeling gumbo. Till I don't see my most sell me on. Take guitar, feel full jar of me, Kale. Son of a gun, go have big fun on the bow. is buzzing people come to see it fall by the dozen just in style go out wild me on my own son of a dog go have big fun on the bio jump loud or fish by me they gonna go tonight I'm gonna see my most set of me oh the guitar feel through joy and me gay Well, you know, 
this has been a great time and it's a chance to to really just have a, a good time and enjoy our friendship and our musicality yeah. together and um i'm awfully glad you were able to come and be part of the show today before you leave yeah i was i had a great time asking the hard questions yeah, <laughs> indeed. But, you know, I just want to tell everybody, uh, I have a, a piano bar, a New York City style piano bar. It's a triangle on the second and fourth Thursday every month. And in fact, uh, we are working hard on having, instead of a keyboard, having a real piano that should be arriving at the triangle any day now. So that's about to step up our game and that's going to be great. And it's committed through the end of the year. And on August 31st, you can find me performing live at Barrett's. And I hope you'll go and have some wonderful seafood and listen to some music that I picked out just for you guys. And uh, Andrew, I had a good time. I can't imagine that I will ever have this um, situation again where I will have a, a friend co-host and let me perform uh, as well. So this was a one-of-a-kind Super Sound Showcase sponsored by Culture Fix here on WMBG. We are grateful, and I am thankful for you and for our friendship. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Great. Now we're going back to the music that you love on WMBG.